Hey, I'm Alan Rabinowitz, and this is Red Giant TV. What you're about to see may disturb you, if you find creating awesome motion graphics and effects disturbing. Yeah, I know there are at least a few of you out there, and if you're watching, you may want to shut this video now. But for the rest of you brave souls, you princes of Maine, you kings of New England, we're going to continue our tutorial on creating the binary transition that you're seeing here. In part one, we created the animation of the footage breaking apart into numbers and then reforming into different footage. But there were things about it that I didn't love. One thing was that I could see the edges of the footage before it broke apart. It kind of killed the mood for me. So let's do a little camera animation to improve things a bit. Okay, before we continue, I'll temporarily turn off the composition's motion blur. You've probably noticed that this is a bit of a render hit. So for now, let's minimize the damage. Go to frame 10 in the timeline and then select the camera layer and hit P to reveal the position property. Then, using the position property stopwatch, set a keyframe for the current value of Z equals negative 888.9. By the way, this number will vary based on the size of the composition, the zoom property, and the millimeter preset you use when setting up your camera. Then, move down to frame 1 second and 15 frames and set the Z position value to negative 550, which moves the camera into the particle field and closer to the image. It also automatically adds another keyframe to the timeline. Then, go to frame 2 seconds and 20 frames and set the position value back to Z equals negative 888.9. In other words, back to its original position. Then, select all of the keyframes and choose Animation, keyframe assistant, easy ease to ease the camera motion. Now, if you do a RAM preview, the edges of the footage are much less noticeable during the transition. Okay, next we're going to add in some red giant magic bullet looks to affect the colors of the footage during the transition. So choose layer, new, adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is a layer that affects every layer below it. So if you create an effect on this layer, Every layer below it will have the effects applied to it. With the adjustment layer selected, choose Effect, Magic Bullet, Looks. Now if you don't have Magic Bullet Looks or any of the other Red Giant software products that we're using in this tutorial, you can always download a free trial from the Red Giant software website so that you can follow along. For those of you that are new to Magic Bullet Looks, let me give you the skinny. Among other things, Magic Bullet Looks is an application that allows you to change the look and feel of your footage through color processing and adding different effects to set the tone. In essence, you can create different film looks without even shooting on film. By subtly or sometimes not so subtly altering the looks of the footage, you can really change the mood. If you've ever seen, I don't know, The Matrix for example, you may have noticed how different color tones were used to show different environments green tones inside the matrix, blue tones outside in the real post-apocalyptic world. Now that's just one of the many kinds of effects I'm talking about. By the way, Looks is not just a plugin for Adobe After Effects. It also runs in Premiere Pro, Apple Final Cut Pro, Motion, Sony Vegas, and Avid Express and Media Composer. And if you buy it for one application, you get it for all that run on your platform. And also, Looks comes with over 100 presets, and those presets are completely customizable and shareable from one application to the next, and even from user to user. There's so much more to say about Looks, but in the interest of time, I'd suggest that you check out the overview and getting started tutorials on the Red Giant website. Anyway, in the timeline, move to a frame in the animation where the particles are fully visible. Then, in the Effects panel, click on the Edit button which takes us into the Looks Builder application. Now the first thing that you're going to see is a bit of a mess. Magic Bullet Looks is showing us what I think is a straight render. I won't get into that whole can of worms other than to say that because there's nothing in the background behind the particles, in other words there's a hole in the alpha channel, Looks is not sure how to handle that empty area of the alpha channel. In general, Magic Bullet Looks is used on your final composited footage, and that means that there shouldn't be any holes in the alpha channel. I wanted to show this to you because I figured that sooner or later you'd run into this and I didn't want you to freak out. And while your final footage will definitely not look like this, there will be a difference in the way that Looks colorizes the shot. So I want to show you a simple solution. Click Cancel to get out, and then choose Layer, New, Solid. Name it BG for background. Set the color to black. 
And once that's done, just make sure that the solid is the same size as the composition, and then click OK to confirm the creation of the new solid. Then in the timeline, place the solid at the bottom of the stack order. Then select our adjustment layer again, and in the effects panel, click edit to get back into looks builder. OK, now that looks much better. Now on the left hand side, you can find the looks gallery of presets. If you mouse over it, it will slide open. You can mess with these, but when you just need something fast, there are a ton of presets to work from. I'm going to go down to the bottom section here, and I'll go into the tints area, and I'll choose the preset called Brilliant Orange Crush. Brilliant Orange Crush is also the official soft drink of Mensa, by the way. Yeah, that and Shasta. Anyway, with that chosen, I'll click OK, and that'll take me out of Looks Builder and back into After Effects. Now, I don't need or even want to have my looks effect for the entire animation. I'd rather have it fade on, be there briefly, and then fade off. So in my timeline, I'll go to frame 10. And I'll select my adjustment layer, and I'll hit T to reveal the opacity. Then, I'll set the opacity to 0%, and I'll click on the opacity keyframe stopwatch to create the first keyframe. Then, I'll jump down 10 frames to frame 20, and I'll set the opacity to 100%. Then, I'll jump down to 2 seconds and 10 frames, and I'll use the keyframe checkbox to add another keyframe with a value of 100%. Then I'll jump down 10 frames to 2 seconds and 20 frames, and I'll set the opacity back down to 0%. OK, a quick RAM preview, and we can see our footage shifting colors as things break apart, and then changing colors as they reform. This can also be very helpful if the two pieces of footage have poorly matched colors, so keep that in mind. Now, another thing that I don't love is that as we transition, the footage continues to move, which makes the particles change color and brightness over time. Not a big fan of that. Plus, I think things will just look cooler if the video freezes right as it's breaking up. So we're going to use time remapping to control the playback of the footage. I don't want to get too into it here, but time remapping is a method of controlling what frames are played back at what time. Think of it like this. Each frame has a number, and we can create keyframes that call up those numbers to play different frames at different times. We can move frame numbers closer together to make them play faster, or further apart to make them play slower. And we can also use time remapping to create a freeze frame. So let's go to frame 19 in the timeline, and once there, select the car footage and choose Layer, Time, Enable Time Remapping. Then, back in the timeline, add a time remapping keyframe by clicking on the time remap keyframe stopwatch. Then select the keyframe and choose Animation Toggle Hold Keyframe. This makes the keyframe a hold keyframe, which means the value won't change until the next keyframe comes along, which really means we now have a freeze frame. Next, select the horse footage and again add time remapping by choosing Layer, Time, Enable Time Remapping. In the timeline, move down to frame 2 seconds and 11 frames. Then select the time remapping keyframes for the horse footage by clicking on the words Time Remap. We're doing this because the other time remap keyframe exists past the end of this composition, so we can't see it, and that means we can't select it. If we were to select and move only one keyframe, what we'd be doing was changing the speed of the video because we would be moving keyframes closer together. Next, slide the keyframes down so that the first keyframe is at 2 seconds and 11 frames. Now, this footage won't start playing until 2 seconds and 11 frames in the timeline because there is no time remap keyframe before them. So basically, we've created another freeze frame, but this time it's at the beginning of the footage, not the end. A quick RAM preview, and we can see the results of our time remapping. Okay, just a few more things to up the ante on this animation. You know, I'm not even really sure what that means, but, but I'm going with it. We're going to add Red Giant's Trap Coat Shine effect to the project to give it some more life. Let's add another adjustment layer by choosing Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Then choose Effect, Trap Code, shine. 
Now, do I even need to tell you about Trap Code Shine? I don't know, maybe you've been living in a cave or under a rock or in a cave under a rock, possibly on another planet. But by now, you must have seen this effect somewhere. And I don't know, but who doesn't love the shiny light ray eye candy that one gets out of Trap Code Shine? Oh, I'm sure there are a few jaded folks out there, but I have never met a client who didn't want me to make things just a little more shiny. Thank you, Petter Norby, the creator of Shine, 3D Stroke, Particular, and a bunch of other awesome plugins. Okay, love fest over. Go into the effects panel and set the effects transfer mode to add. And then twirl down the colorize option and set it to none. What we've just done is told Shine to affect the footage in an additive way, creating bright colors as the Shine overlaps the footage. And we've told Shine to use the original colors from the footage to generate the light rays instead of colorizing it. Now let's animate the opacity of this Shine layer. So I'll go to frame 10 and I'll select my Shine adjustment layer and I'll hit T to reveal the opacity. Then I'll set the opacity to 0%. And I'll click on the opacity keyframe stopwatch to create the first keyframe. Then I'll jump down 20 frames to the one second mark and I'll set the opacity to 100%. Then I'll jump down to the two seconds mark and I'll use the keyframe checkbox to add another keyframe with a value of 100%. Then I'll jump down 20 frames to 2 seconds and 20 frames and I'll set the opacity back down to 0%. Jumping back to the middle of my animation, while I like the way the trap coat shine effect looks, I want it to be affected by our magic bullet looks effect. So I'll move the shine adjustment layer below the looks adjustment layer. Better. Now I'll turn on the composition's motion blur. Finally, I'd like to make one last change. I like the way things look here, but I want to give it something a little more. I'm going to select my looks adjustment layer, and I'll go into the effects panel, and I'll choose edit to get back into looks builder. And in looks builder, I'll go into the tools on the right side, and I'll go into the lens section, and I'll choose to add a vignette to the lens. This allows me to have the brightness fade off as it moves away from the center. I can adjust the size of the vignette easily until I'm happy. I can also adjust the fall off, or even the center of the vignette, but I won't do that here. Anyway, I'll click OK to confirm the change, and one last RAM preview, and there you go. Our full binary transition. And you can take that to the bank, although given this current state of the economy, you may just want to stuff it under your mattress until things get better. And hey, remember, if you don't have trap code shine or magic bullet looks, don't feel left out. You can always download a trial version of the software and give it a go. And you know what? Just for watching this tutorial, we're going to give you a discount on both products. Go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get this and other special Red Giant TV deals. Now these are time sensitive discounts. They won't last forever. All coupon codes expire 30 days from the launch date of each tutorial. So again, go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get the coupon codes for the most current Red Giant TV discounts. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz, and this is Red Giant TV. See you next time.